Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today I've got some great news. If you are a default engine developer, and if you are not a default engine developer, uh, it may be time to check it out. And that's because the default engine is now open sourced, and this is a big deal. Default was originally started by King, and it's always been available for free. But people have definitely had trust issues when it comes to King. And then King was acquired by Activision Blizzard. And if I'm going to make a top ten list of game companies people trust, I don't think Activision Blizzard is going to be high up that list either. Which is a shame because it has always been a great project, and it's just the fact that you know, little hesitation on the trust department there, like what are they getting out of it has held people back, but now it is fully open sourced and we're going to see some details of that. First, a quick introduction. This is the default game engine. It's mostly for 2D games, also going to be used to create 3D games. It's very clean in its approach. Everything is a collection. Your top level uh, detail, it's a collection. Your your character as a collection and so on. And a collection itself is composed of game objects. Game objects are uh, things like this infantry guy here, and it in turn is composed of things like sprites. I mean, you can add multiple different um, objects into a game object, so we could create uh, new components here, various different things that go in here, so I can have sound effect or, or UI or whatever that was attached to it at the game object level. And then on top of that, we've got scripts. Scripts are sent here. Scripts use this cool uh, messaging system. It's confusing at first, but once you get it down, it becomes second nature, and it makes it really intuitive to use this as an engine. But perhaps the most important part is it's very, very polished. You've got all kinds of tools in here. So for example, if you've got your game project, we'll open that up. We've got settings that are driving it. If I want to bring in a dependency from the asset portal, I can add it here to the dependency section, and then that will automatically bring in plugins or extensions. This guy can be used to target many different platforms. We have a full code editor built into here. Uh, you've got debugging support right out of the box. You've got animation tools. You've got 2D and 3D support, 3D model importing support, uh, input handling, UI handling, you name it. So here we go. We got character mappings for um, binding multiple actions to the same uh, so trigger pulls or touches or mouse clicks all can be bound to the same commands it's a really polished engine. In fact, when you first launch it up, you're going to find uh, it really has a nice WYSIWYG walk you through the initial process of creating your game, a uh, number of templates to work from there. It's a nice engine for onboarding, and if you give it some time, get used to the programming systems. It's a really nice engine to work with in general. You, you will be impressed, I promise you, if you've never checked out Default, do so, especially now that it is open source. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what Default's like, because I did this tutorial, and I did this tutorial, and I will link both of these tutorials down below. So uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, but now we're back to Default itself. Here we are at the Default webpage. This is available at Default.com, and we have a bit of initial announcement. So basically, they are now open source. We're going to get into it with the Q&A section of it, kind of give you more clarity of what's going on here. But as part of the announcement, basically, King has transferred the Default to the Default Foundation. Some of the Default team are going over to the Foundation, and uh, King gave them some seed money, basically. So they have money to start with. They have a slightly reduced team, but some of the team members from the Default team are are now part of the uh, foundation, but the foundation is ultimately going to be community supported if it's going to succeed. But they do have funding to start things off. It'll be interesting to see where things go from there. So now we're going to get a little bit into the FAQ. Um, one thing I found is a bit of a conflict. I'm not sure where this is going to go, but it says here it is licensed under the Apache 2 license. So if you don't know your source license, that's a really permissive one. It's good from an end user's perspective. It doesn't put a lot of limitations on you. It's sort of in the same category as the MIT or Zlib license. Uh, it's one of my favorites to see as an end user. Um, so that's kind of the basis of it. We're going to get into the frequently asked questions now. Is Default still owned by King? Nope. It's now owned by the Default Foundation. King has one seat on the Default Foundation. Has King abandoned Default? No. King is still using Default for selected live games. Now, that's interesting because I don't know if that means they're going to use it for future games or not. Because uh, live games basically sounds to me like games that are already created and, you know, they're maintaining them. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to keep using it, but frankly, I don't care. It doesn't impact me in any way, uh, especially now that King isn't pushing the development of it going forward. It's now part of the foundation. So who is working on it? It's being worked on by members of the default team. The team plans to grow during 2020, but with any open source project, it will rely on the community contributions. Uh, who pays for default development? King made a generous donation to get things started. Uh, community, public donations, uh, corporate deals, so on, are going to make it go forward. Will the quality degrade? Nope. Uh, will we be, have a stable engine that is kept up to date with the latest platform requirements for iOS, Android, and more? And that is one of the big pains in the butt for maintaining these kind of things is every time a new uh, Android platform comes out or iOS standard comes out or whatever, the game engine, people have to update it. And thankfully, they're committing to do that. Uh, native extension build servers be shut down? No, it's not, but it's going to be open source. So if you want to host your own, you can. Uh, is there still going to be a roadmap? Yes, there is. Can community influence the roadmap? It's working towards that. Um, 
So uh, with reported issues, feature requests, and tasking being public on GitHub, it would be largely part of the community for determining how that goes. Are you planning to create a default marketplace? No, they still have the asset portal. And the asset portal is great, by the way. And the asset portal is sticking around, but there is no plans to make a paid marketplace right now. Uh, what license is used for default? Default is free and it's going to be using the Apache 2 license. Again, that's interesting. I'll show you in a sec why. Uh, is using an open source game engine safe for my projects. This is one of those things that this one is why I like licenses like the Apache. The Apache license, Zlib license, MIT license, those kind of open source licenses have no impact on how your game goes forward. If you modify the engine, you don't have to release your examples. If you make your game open source, you don't have to release your source code. That's nice about that particular library. Sorry, license. Uh, what part are open source? Pretty much everything. Uh, where do I find more information about the open source um, activity? So they've got their web page, GitHub. They have a Slack channel and open source uh, section. I will link this article, by the way. So if you want all that information, it's going to be available. Uh, where do I start? Contribution guide is available. Uh, the programming languages used here are C++ and Clojure. We'll look at that slightly more in the future. Uh, so if you don't know either of those, you could contribute in other ways, such as documentations, examples, and so on. Um, Rely on community for most new features. The, found, uh, the default foundation will be working on main things to start with. Uh, will you be hiring? Not initially. If enough money comes in, hopefully they will. Uh, don't have the time to contribute. Can I give them money? Yes, you can give them money. You can give them money via Patreon, PayPal, and GitHub sponsors. And the default community is quite small. Are you sure there are enough people? As if they have not uh, focused on community growth in previous years, now they're going to start. So we're going to see uh, more default in the news, I think. So anyways, uh, that is the default engine. It is now open source. On the topic of open sourciness, uh, here we are at GitHub. It is available at github.com forward slash default forward slash default. Um, the thing I find interesting is once again, right now, view license. The license is the default license. Uh, I don't I don't know what this is. I don't know why this is here. Uh, this hopefully gets turned into Apache 2 at some point in time. Uh, so that is the point of confusion I have right now. Hopefully that gets verified. Again, this is all very new. Uh, this is all just coming on live. So maybe that'll change in time. I'm not sure. Uh, but here you can see the code. Interestingly enough, if you want to contribute to the code, you've got two sides of things, basically the editor and the engine. If you go to the engine side, it's pretty straightforward and normal. So for example, let me go into the particle systems here. And you'll see if I go to the source, we are dealing with C++. If I go into the editor side, this is the UI side of things. This is where Clojure comes in. And I got to admit, I actually know nothing about Clojure. Nada. Oops. I also don't know where to click, apparently. Let's click here. OK, so here we're going into the source code for the Clojure side of things. And here is the editor source code. This is what Clojure looks like. I, again, I have zero experience with Clojure. And this might be one of those things where default might suffer a little bit. When they were a closed source project, you can use a, an oddball uh, programming language and not have trouble. Uh, but now we're actually dealing with they're going to try and recruit a community. And the community for Clojure, I don't think, is huge. So it's going to be interesting. Let me know, do you use Clojure now? And if so, what do you think of it? Let me know that in the comments down below. Uh, so anyways, that is it. If you do want to learn more about the default engine, I have done the two tutorial series. The first one is newest. Uh, I did this late last year, I think. Uh, this is a crash course. This is using default 2.0. And I walk through pretty much everything you need to know to get started, except for I think 3D is about the only subject I didn't get into because it was pretty um, under development at the time. So you can see we've got a pretty good base going on. If what you want to see isn't covered here, I also did a default 1.x series uh, covering another a number of different topics there as well. So if you don't find it in the one, perhaps it's in the other. Uh, these are text and video uh, tutorials in both cases. So um, if you want to learn more about the default engine, I do have you covered. But anyways, that is today's news. The default game engine is now open source uh, under the control of the default foundation. No more King, no more Activision Blizzard. Uh, all fully open source, all aspects of it under a good license, at least eventually. Um, I'm interested to hear what you you have to say. Uh, default is really battle tested, has been used to create uh, a number of successful games out there. Um, it, it's really focused. If you use it, I think you will enjoy it. It's interesting. As you can see, it targets a number of different platforms, including HTML, Facebook Instant Game, Steam, Linux, iOS, macOS, Android, and Windows. So the major players outside of the consoles are all supported there. Uh, it's well documented. There are a ton of different examples. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also the asset portal for you to check out. We've got a number of different categories, such as the project you're looking at. In this example, that is a template you can pull down. It's got a nice packaging system, a nice plugin based system. It's got good learning materials. It's got good documentation. It's just a really polished, well done engine. The only thing that was really holding it back before was that tie to King. And now it is open source. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. If you are interested, it is available for downloads on, yep, 
Linux as well. So you got Mac, Windows, and Linux download versions all available there. They used to release pretty much a new release every about two weeks. Uh, I'd be interested to see now that they're their own project and open source, how that changes if releases become less frequently because, you know, it's open source. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see how that turns out. And I'd be interested in hearing what you think of the default engine. Have you checked it in the past? Did the source, uh, lack of source code kind of change your opinion on it? And do you have a new opinion now that it is open source? Let me know these things. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. All right.